Welcome to the deep dive. We uh, we plunge into fascinating topics, try to pull out those key insights to get you informed fast. Today, it's less about just tech specs and more, well, almost a philosophical argument brewing in PC gaming. Think of it as a choice, really, between two powerful uh, visions for how you interact with games with your computer. On one side, SteamOS, you know, backed by Valve, huge billion dollar infrastructure. It's a very curated vision. And on the other, Bizite. This is like the challenger, yeah. driven by Linux enthusiasts who our source says, uh, never sleep, pure community innovation fuel. So our mission here is simple. Dig into the Savage Reviews YouTube video, SteamOS versus Bazite, Valve Vision or Community Power 2025. We want to pull out the core differences, the surprising bits, and you know what it all means for gaming, for user control, maybe even for your next app. It really is a compelling matchup. And what's so fascinating, I think, isn't just the technical side, though we'll definitely get into that. It's um, it's fundamentally about these two really different approaches to software, how it's designed, how it gets to you, the user, mm -hmm. and crucially, how much control you actually keep or will give up. Mm -hmm. It's this constant tension, isn't it? Control versus convenience. Polished versus open. Okay, yeah, let's unpack that, that core philosophical divide, because it really is the heart of this whole thing. Like right. you said, Valve's side, it's aiming for what the source calls a polished lockdown gaming appliance. Think console, right? Tune for one thing gaming, everything else is kind of secondary, or maybe not even there. Mm -hmm. Then there's Bazite, their whole thing is gaming performance plus desktop flexibility. So it's that battle, isn't it? Corporate curation versus uh, real user control. And you, listening, you get to see which side fits you better. And the stakes are pretty high, practically speaking, mm -hmm. for your actual gaming, your computing. Right. What the data in our source makes crystal clear is both these OACs, they just, well, they absolutely demolish Windows for gaming systems performance-wise. Wow, demolish. That's strong. It is, but the tests seem to back it up consistently. They manage it by basically getting rid of all that Windows overhead, the background stuff. Yeah. But how they do it and what that feels like to use, totally different. Two very distinct paths to great gaming performance. That's critical. Okay, so let's start with SteamOS then. Valve's curated vision, how does it embody that polished lockdown idea? So for anyone maybe not familiar, SteamOS is Valve's official gaming operating system. It's what runs the Steam Deck, which is huge, obviously. And it's popping up on other handhelds too. Under the hood, it's built on Arch Linux, known for being cutting edge, user-driven, and it uses the KDE Plasma desktop, also very customizable. Right. But here's the thing. Despite that powerful Linux base, the primary goal is super narrow, run Steam games. Without Windows bloat, that's it. And that narrow focus, it shapes the entire experience. Yep. From the second you turn it on, it's designed to feel, well, console-like. Mm -hmm. You don't see a normal desktop first. Nope. Straight into this optimized gaming mode. Ah, okay. Navigation, pretty much all controller. Yeah. It's smooth, intuitive, makes you, as the source nicely puts it, pretend Windows never existed. Huh, I like that. It's all about immediacy. Jump in, play games, minimum fuss. And for all those Windows games, it uses Proton, which is Valve's, frankly, amazing compatibility layer. Think of it like a real-time translator, letting Windows game code talk to the Linux system, talk to the hardware, and often, it worked incredibly well, sometimes even better than on Windows itself. And the performance numbers really show that. That's a massive draw, right? The testing our source highlights. It shows SteamOS outperforming Windows in 10 major games while tying in others consistently. That's not just, you know, a, a tiny frame difference. Often it's smoother, more stable gaming. For a non-Windows OS to pull that off against the, well, the giant, that's huge. But, and this is where it gets really interesting, like you said earlier, that trade-off. Convenience versus control. SteamOS gives you this amazing streamlined gaming, but there's a cost. Yeah. The big one our source called out. SteamOS locks the root file system harder than government secrets. Mm. That's a pretty vivid way to put it. It captures Valve's whole approach. So maybe explain for the listener why lock it down so tight. What does that actually mean day to day? Yeah, good question. It really gets to Valve's strategy. Locking it down helps with a few things. Mm. Stability is key. Security too. And making sure the user experience is consistent, predictable, especially on the Steam Deck, where they control everything, hardware and software. Right, the appliance idea. Exactly. They want it to just work, like a console. But for you, if you're a power user, someone who likes to tinker, it throws up some big walls. Say you want Discord, right? Or some other app that isn't, like, officially blessed by Valve or easy to get through their channels. Well, you better hope it's flat pack available or enter workaround territory. Flat pack. That's the universal Linux package thing. Yeah, exactly. Makes installing apps across different Linux versions easier. 
But if your app isn't a flat pack, you're talking manual installs, fiddling around. And here's the real pain point. Every update potentially wipes modifications. Oh, wow. Yeah, it creates these uh, bizarre cycles where power users constantly rebuild setups. You install something, update comes, poof, it's gone or broken. That sounds incredibly frustrating. It can be. The source nails it with another analogy. It's like buying a sports car that factory resets every oil change. Huh. Okay, that paints a picture. Performance is great, but don't get too attached to your customizations. Precisely. You get the speed, but lose that freedom to really make it your own persistently. Right, so if SteamOS is Valve's controlled performance-first machine, then Bayzite, that's the community stepping up. The source says Bayzite kind of looked at SteamOS and said, hold my energy drink, which is great. This is where you see that open source spirit, you know, finding a different way to solve that same Linux gaming performance puzzle. Absolutely, and Bayzite starts differently, right from the foundation. No Arch Linux here, it's built on Fedora. Fedora is, well, it's a really powerful, stable, highly respected Linux distribution, often gets new tech early, backed by Red Hat. Mm -hmm. So solid bones. Okay. And crucially, Bayzite offers, quote, identical gaming focus with significantly more freedom than SteamOS. What that means for you, the user, you can install regular desktop applications without unlocking anything or performing digital gymnastics. Ah. No workarounds needed for Discord, then. Generally, no. Okay. You just install things like you would on a normal desktop Linux system, much less fighting the OS. Right. Plus, it supports both KDE Plasma, like Steam OS, great for customization, and the GNOME desktop. GNOME's known for being clean, modern, efficient. So you get a choice of desktop style, too. Yep. More choice right from the start. It really embraces that Linux philosophy of, you know, user freedom. And it's not just about freedom, right? Basicite has some real technical edges, especially for people with newer gear, because it follows Fedora's faster update cycle. It gets those cutting edge graphics drivers arriving months before SteamOS. Now, for a serious gamer always chasing frames or someone who just bought a new GPU, that sounds pretty appealing. But I got to ask, does cutting edge sometimes mean, well, bleeding edge? Is there a stability risk with getting stuff so early? That's a sharp question. And yeah, it's always a potential concern with fast moving open source stuff. While super new drivers can sometimes have bugs, the Fedora base is solid and Basicet has a strong community testing things. Major instability seems rare. And the upside, especially for newer hardware, often worth it. Those fresher drivers, newer kernels, they directly translate to better frame rates on newer hardware. Right. That's where Basicet really pulls ahead. Got the latest graphics card. You'll likely see the benefit almost immediately. But what about older stuff, like the Steam Deck itself? Good point. On older devices, like the Deck, the source finds performance is virtually identical to Steam OS mm. because the hardware itself becomes the bottleneck, right? The faster drivers can't magically make the chip faster than it is. Okay, that levels the playing field there. It does. Mm -hmm. But what users report across the board for Bazite, better battery life and gaming performance versus Windows, still beating Windows, plus that instant gaming boot without bloatware ceremonies. It's lean, efficient, crucial for handhelds, and just way faster to get into a game than waiting for Windows to do its thing. It really shows the value of an OS built for gaming. Yeah, that lean, bloat-free feel is a huge plus for both, it seems. Which brings us neatly to installation, accessibility. Who is each one really for? With SteamOS, it's pretty cut and dry, isn't it? It officially supports Steam Deck and select handhelds, period. Trying to put it on uh, random hardware, as the source puts it, you're talking unofficial methods and prayer. It's meant for specific devices, an appliance OS. Exactly. A stark contrast to Blazite. Blazite is designed for breath. A universal gaming OS, really. It supports desktops, laptops, handhelds, tablets, and even home theater setups out of the box. Much more flexible hardware choice for you. But is it harder to install? Well, let's be real. It stays more complex than clicking next repeatedly, like installing Windows. That's just Linux, generally. Mm. Needs a bit more technical comfort. However, and this is a huge plus, the documentation is stellar. The community effort there is massive clear step-by-step -step guides. Okay. It really lowers the barrier if you're willing to read a bit and follow instructions. So not quite a one-click install, maybe, but the path is very well marked for anyone wanting that control and hardware freedom. So when you're weighing these up, it really comes down to you, the listener, yeah. your preference, yeah. how you see your tech life. Do you want that curated Just Works gaming appliance, happy to accept some limits for that smooth ride? Or do you see limits as, I don't know, 
personal challenges do you value having that top tier gaming in a full flexible desktop you control completely? It's a very personal thing and both are clearly way better gaming platforms than Windows based on this. Which kind of wraps up our deep dive into SteamOS versus Bizite. The verdict from Savage Reviews, nicely put, your choice depends on personality. Simple as that. Are you Team Valve's polished lockdown gaming appliance? You like that console feel, the guaranteed stability. Or are you leaning towards Bizite, wanting both worlds, that killer gaming performance, but also the total freedom of a proper Linux desktop? Yeah. So what's the takeaway for you listening right now? It means if you're building or buying a dedicated gaming machine, handheld, desktop, HTPC, whatever, you have real compelling choices beyond Windows now. Choices that offer better performance, more focused experience. It's actually a really exciting time for Linux gaming. These two are leading that charge from different corners. And you know what's really fascinating, stepping back a bit, this isn't just about gaming, is it? Or even just operating systems. Yeah. If you connect it to the bigger picture, mm -hmm. this whole tension, curated control versus user freedom, it plays out everywhere in our digital lives. That's true. Think about your phone, mm. streaming services, social media. Where else do we willingly give up some control just because it's easier, more convenient? And conversely, where do we push back? Fight for that freedom to customize, to install what we want, to truly own our digital space against these uh, walled gardens. Mm -hmm. This whole SteamOS versus Bazite thing, it makes you ask a bigger question, I think. What does user-friendly truly mean today? Is it just the absence of complicated choices? Or is it actually mm -hmm. being empowered by having those choices yeah. and the real ability to use them? Wow. Yeah, that's a powerful thought to leave folks with, something to definitely chew on. Well, we hope this deep dive gave you some really valuable insights into this uh, this evolving world of gaming and user control. We definitely encourage you to mull over these ideas, maybe even try out these systems if we've piqued your interest. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive.